credentials to this eager audience of ours. Uh, with your permission, sir, uh, Krish, as Mr. Krishnamurti is popularly known as the Executive Vice President and uh, Group Head of Human Resource Development at Infosys. In this role, is responsible for envisioning the roadmap for HR, driving strategy, and implementing operational priorities aligned with the overall organizational mandate of Infosys. Krish has over 30 years of experience and has led several global HR functions in organizations like Bharti Airtel, Hindustan Unilever, and Unilever. And uh, prior to joining Infosys, he was the head of HR for South Asia at Philips. And in his wide ranging experiences in these organizations, he has led the transformation of HR into a strategic partner, facilitated organization wide transformations and capability development, and was instrumental in building a strong talent pool through a series of leadership development initiatives. I'm not going to take too much of time reading out his long credentials. Suffice it <laughs> to say that I'm a speaker of time. Over to you. All over you. <clears throat> Okay, uh, firstly, thank you very much, Dave. Uh, thanks for that introduction. And uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I hope you have uh, had a, you know, a fantastic overview from uh, BCG, which is you know giving a good idea of what the future holds. So um, I don't know what, what are some of the things that we have and uh, we can do in the next 10 minutes. But what I'm going to do is really, uh maybe you know make it more like a make it a session where there are three or four things that we need to look at from the hr perspective yeah <clears throat> i think prateek uh, which is listening to his session he spoke a lot about the the you know the work from home and what are some of the companies doing as as we go to the future thing but if you were to really look at the the future i would say the next 10 years would be in a way the defining decade for uh, Indian banking, you know, there's going to be lots of changes. So what I'm going to do is really take 10, 15 minutes, just talk about some of those, and maybe some of the key questions or key challenges that I think in HR, we need to have an answer. Uh, am I going to suggest any answers to you? No, uh, I won't, but I'm just going to say, okay, these are some areas to look at, and I think it's a far complex area, and I think, uh, you know, if we start looking for those areas, maybe we'll get those answers. So, you know, if, um i don't know if i can get the presentation quickly so that will that will help uh, <clears throat> what what i was trying to really do in my presentation is to really think of what are some of the the big changes that are uh, that are facing us yeah <clears throat> as i said clearly this would be what one calls as the defining decade there are lots of things happening so if you go to the next slide it it just kind of highlights some of the key things that I think are are going to be there uh, within the you know within the Indian banking setup. Okay, I think lots of changes are going to come through. One is really technology, uh, and and if you really look at technology, uh, maybe you can go to the next slide. Yeah, uh, Animesh, that's right. So if you look at technology, I think uh, the technology is going to it's already making a big impact, but it's going to make a and and this COVID has accelerated some of that already you're going to get more and more companies become more digital yeah and you're going to have more and more banks become more digital so therefore this acceleration towards digital is going to be really you'll see much more faster things happening i think for 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 any bank or any of us the question is you know if the bank has to become more digital what are some of the challenges and how do we do it so that's something we need to keep and also all the other businesses are going to be much more digital the second part is while there is this, the way we work becomes digital, there's also going to be a lot more at the heart of it, a lot more use of technology in how automation and AI, and they'll become much more pervasive over the next 10 years. Uh, and I think, you know, many of many of these areas we've seen there and you, you'll see much more happening uh, over the next, uh, next few years. I think the third area, really, when you look at uh, again, learning from what COVID has taught us, you're going to really have lots more smart remote hybrid work and smart cities, smart offices. So this whole thing of digital or uh, becoming lots more virtual, but using some physical is going to be a reality. So that's the other change that we're going to see. And everywhere, every business has to think of how can we be ready for this future smart world 
uh, whether things like IoT, you know, and other 5G are going to be used where there's also going to be a lot of thing about this this mesh of physical versus the digital yeah and therefore that's going to be another big change that is there of course this whole environment energy uh, is there but the, the the heart of that will be a lot more focus on what i call the social impact and purpose and i think that's that's going to be another drive that you will see as, as we go forward and lastly i think especially more so in the banking industry you're going to have lots more regulatory changes some which are freeing up things, but some which are looking at more compliance, you know, and some therefore you, you see that happening and that'll be, uh, uh, that'll be a big aim. So I see these five big changes and there could be many, but these are the five that I thought uh, came to my mind. You know, the impact of technology uh, and how it's going to make businesses much more digital and how banks also have to accelerate their whole transformation to become a digital uh, kind of a bank how this whole automation and AI will play a big role in how things are managed all across. Uh, the use, the, the remote working, but this whole digital workplace, which is smart office, smart homes, smart cities, you know, and, and, and how this remote working comes in there. And, and this whole thing about energy, climate change, and social impact, which is going to be much more bigger. And lastly, all the regulatory changes. Yeah, so I think these, these, this is just the kind of a scenario I thought as a quick context. Nothing new, you guys know this more, but I just thought I'll, I'll paint this as a, as a picture as we go forward. But if I go to the next slide, and this is where we get into a little bit of an HR area. Uh, and I think this slide has a bit of animation. So what I'm going to talk is, if I look at what are the changes in the society that is happening, you know, what are what are some changes in people's attitudes? Uh, I, I think we're going to see, see some of those. So what I'm going to do is really, there are six key things that I've seen are, changes in the society and attitudes that we've got to be ready with. I think the first one we've got to say is humans have to be, we'll, be, we'll have to be ready for being like an, like augmented humans because lots of technology will enable us and how do we use that technology is going to be very important. And the organizations that really crack this, this is how you can get technology and human interface work better is going to be successful. Yeah, so therefore technology is going to be a key role in how every individual like you and me can be much more effective. The second one is uh, very key because what we're going to see also is that this, this shorter career spans, you know, uh, earlier we used to have 30, 35, you know, I'm going to be 36 years working and again, people are looking at 35, 40 years of career spans. Now people are looking at much shorter. And with these, with lots of changes, people say, okay, I may do two or three different careers, you know, maybe a 10 year in one, then I move and do something very different. So, so there are shorter career spans. And people who are entering the workforce are looking at a career span of three to five years initially. And then they'll say, what I want to do. So shorter career horizons is important. And the second key thing is there is a lot more focus on skills. In the past, there was a lot of focus on what kind of a degree and stuff you have. That may still be relevant in some parts, but for the bulk of it, it's about what you can do. And therefore, if an organization can look at those skills and how you can measure and use them, then I think they'll be much more successful. I think the third key, key trend that we'll see is this whole thing of flexibility. Uh, and people had already started demanding it, but with COVID, you'll demand much more. You know, People are now used to it. And therefore, this flexibility will become very, very big. And I think as HR, we have to now move to a, to a place where initially we used to have all these formal contracts, you know, eight hours of work and you pay this much salary. Then we move to what they call as a psychological contract. But maybe we need to move to an entrepreneurial contract. You say, okay, you are like a kind of a thing, but these are some things that I look for you. And you know, that kind of a thing, like an internal consultant. So those are kind of things that we got to do, but still have that bond. So flexibility will be another big trend uh, in, the, in the people that we got to look at. We're going to have diverse people entering our workforce. I think the banks, the Indian banks are probably seeing the, the greatest diversity, but you'll see much more, yeah? And how do you manage that diversity? You got young people, you got old people. You got people coming from cities, you got people from coming from a tier three or town or a rural thing. Uh, you got different types of people, you got men, women. So this diversity is going to be much bigger and how do you manage all of that is going to be critical. The fifth area is this focus on well-being, you know, uh, and that I think again, while it was starting a little bit, it has again increased a lot more with COVID because people are now looking at well-being, mental well-being, physical well-being, a lot more about, uh, you know, how are people at work? 
The last part is this whole focus on purpose. People will look for companies. Is this company purposeful? Yeah, and I think that way the banks have a good story to say because you're you're aiding the economy and the growth of the economy. But it's very important. And they'll say, okay, what is this company doing? And we've got to have a strong story around it. So as we look at these trends, I'll now go quickly and say, what are the what are the four or five key challenges that you think that we think we have to crack in HR for the next decade? Yeah. Uh, because this is a decade, you're going to see much more changes, and COVID is going to has really fast tracked many of those. So, what are those challenges that are there? And I'll try to start with the first one. If you go to the next slide, uh, I think th this is a question that all of us have to ask. If if we are going to see rapid digitization in the in in say a bank, is our workforce ready? How do I get my workforce ready for this rapid digitization? And that's something you got to really think about and say, okay. And you know, and the, the, there's a small, uh, very nice uh, word that I heard from Bill Gates, uh, which uh, or nice quote. And he said that you know sometimes we overestimate things in the short term, but underestimate the impact of things in the long term. And now with all of this, you know, COVID will definitely make much more than what's what we are imagining in the next few years. So therefore. This digitization is going to be much more faster. How do we plan? What is our workforce strategy for that? Are we getting the right workforce? Are we getting building the right capabilities? Uh, which are the right capabilities we got to build? So that's something we got to start uh, putting. So that that would be the first challenge for all of us. So going on to the next slide, the, the next challenge is all about this thing about this whole remote thing, you know, this digital kind of a thing or physical versus virtual. How do we make this remote working successful? And before that, you got to really crack this thing about what is remote banking for you? How can you? And, and therefore, you know, it will be a completely digital bank. Maybe people will never see a building and still do all kinds of uh, banking transactions. Uh, how do you do that? How do you create this remote banking accessible all across? But when you do that, you also say, OK, how can I have remote working, which will go hand in hand with your reimagining of remote banking? I heard, uh, you know, Access Bank talk about, and I spoke to the HR head, Raj Kamal of uh, Access Bank, and she said that they started this gig thing, and she was amazed at the number of responses she got. But more important, what she said was, she got lots of responses of people in tier two and tier three towns. So the demand for doing gig work is 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 there, is is dominant, and we just have to create the the mechanism to build that. So remote working is not only how the work will be there. It's about what kind of talent we need. How do we reach out to this new type of talent? What kind of uh, kind of agreements we'll have with these kind of you know employment agreements that you'll have? How will we ensure security and safety? So I think those are some of the challenges that we got to do. But what is what is unquestionable is the, the this has opened up a whole new set of talent, a whole new set of things that we can build. And I think it's only our imagination which will stop us from making this this happen. The third one is all about, you know, culture, you know, and, and, and you'll see two or three more about culture, but this is an element of culture, which is very important. I think compassion and understanding of people is, is at the heart of every enterprise and we need to do more of it uh, as, as people are struggling through this and, you know, as, as, as the economy kind of, you know, goes under a bit of pressure. But at the same time, there is this need to build some accountability. And, and how as HR we support this accountability plus compassion is going to be very important. There's this whole focus, if you look at any bank, there is this whole focus on compliance, you know, and sometimes that, that's that's an area where we, we, you know, we could slip. So how, how do we create this accountability for compliance? So performance accountability, accountability for compliance, but yet at the same time, having a human face, giving people the chance to develop and do is going to be a challenge. But sometimes what happens is it's like a pendulum. Sometimes one, one goes to, towards the one side. You know, we used to have all these bell curves and they said, oh, move the other side. But I think I think here is where you got to find a balance and say, yes, maybe we got to move a little more towards accountability and how do we do it in a compassionate way? And that's the kind of culture that each 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 organization has to decide and build. The fourth big area, if you go to the next chart, is Again, all about culture. And this culture is about what I would call as a culture of continuous skilling. And that I think is something which will be, you know, if you don't do it, you know, you're not going to be uh, successful in business because 
things are going to change much faster. You're going to be digitizing much more. Uh, technology is going to be impacting you. If people don't learn and uh, and, and kind of uh, keep abreast of what is needed, they you know it will be under a lot of pressure. Your customers will demand a lot more. So you have to understand customer understanding will will have to improve and and, and build that. So therefore, this this is where we've got to build as an organ as organization build a culture of understanding what is needed, understanding the market. Uh, getting that need back to the organization, making people learn on their own, uh, and that's that's critical. Uh, I think, and and unless this this culture of learning uh, is there, and and learning doesn't mean that you got to ensure that learning is deployed, and people who are learning and doing the right thing for the future are the ones who grow. Well, that's the kind of culture that we want to build. So this is a big challenge. Yeah, and I think uh, remote remote has helped us provide lots more tools for learning. You know, even in our own organization, we've seen lots more people remotely uh, and and the technology is going to give you so much opportunities for online and remote learning. But how do you really link it to the business, link it to what is needed in the in the business and make people learn and deploy it and reward is going to be a big challenge for us. I think the last challenge is really to lead all of this is about leaders and how do you build the leaders who will be your future, you know, you need leaders who will start a new direction. You know, you'll need leaders who will think digital. You'll need leaders who will think very differently. So you've got to start building that, that group of leaders who are able to take that new step in building something different. So that's going to be a challenge. So therefore, this is not going to be the leaders of whatever they've been successful, yes, but they've got to have something different. They've got to be somebody who's able to rethink, recreate, and build something new. Those are the kind of leaders that we've got to start building. So I think those those are my five key challenges. Yeah, I think there's lots of change happening. Uh, I can see that there are also lots of changes in the attitudes of people. I've, I've spoken about a few, but there are the five big challenges that in HR, uh, every Indian bank will have to look at. Number one, this whole thing about how do I drive digitization and is my workforce ready for that? How do I train them? Number two is this whole thing of remote working, remote banking, and looking at alternate talent. You know, what kind of talent and this whole workforce strategy, talent, making remote working work, uh, all of that is going to be the second big uh, area. The third one is this whole thing of compassion and accountability and creating the culture of really balancing these two. The fourth, again, to summarize is this culture of continuous learning. That's going to be much more important in an industry like banking. Where you're going to see much more changes through technology regulation and many things that are happening and lastly you need the leaders you need the leaders who can lead all of these change and how do you build them and and you got to start now and then putting some bets in and building them in a different way so with that i'll just end i think uh, thank you i just thought i'll i'll present some of the challenges that are there uh, some of them may not have easy answers uh, but i think it's it's important that we all start thinking about it so i'll just urge you as you go forward to see how you can really, you know, uh, think about this future. So thank you. Uh, as I said, the next decade is, is a defining decade. I can see so many things happening. And, and the context of COVID really makes it much more, what I call, there is a much more a burning platform for change. Yeah? And the much more of a, a, of a thing that will enable organizations to change. And as HR, we got to seize this, seize this moment. As I say, carpe diem, seize the day, seize the moment and see how you can really transform the industry. Thank you and all the best. Thanks indeed. Uh, thanks indeed, uh, uh, Mr. Krish. Uh, Pratik, any any questions, any poses to Mr. Krish at this point of time? I think uh, very nicely articulated. I think I like the way Krish summarized in these five buckets. I think it uh, pretty much is a you know, very important uh, summary for uh, all the banks to take away you know, driving digitization, remote working, compassion, continuous learning, and leadership. And I'm hoping that in the next uh, panel, we'll be able to touch upon many of these issues because this is what we would like to also hear from our panelists, as in uh, how have they lived through these over the last six months and what do they think lies in store as we move forward? Thank you, Prat. I think they have uh, one more point. Uh, any of us, sir, Deputy Chairman, sir? Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
I have to unmute. Actually, this is some uh, new normal for all of us. No? So, mute and mute. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Mr. Krish. Actually, it's wonderful. Uh, I think um, uh, like uh, our views are same. Actually, we are converging on all our thoughts. Uh, for me, your last point is the first point. Uh, <laughs> you said the leadership. Actually, it is the leaders who should have the vision and think about it. It starts from there. And once the leader is convinced, this is how it is going to be, and other things will flow. But then we have seen, seen that drastic changes. We never thought that our people can adopt so fast for so many changes. Sometimes we underestimate. Them. So yeah. I think uh, the capability is very much there, and the technology is going to drive the things. And uh, anyway, for Infosys, is good business. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, it's a very good point. I think I've, we've also seen that the adaptability of people is phenomenal. Yeah, people have adapted to remote working. People and I think that's the, I think as Indians and as you know, generally people are are much more adaptable. But you're right. We got to really put the put them in the right direction uh, and make that change sustainable and and really embed it. So that's important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In fact, when the lockdown first time happened, and I serve uh, financial services and I serve banks. Many of our banking clients, all of their employees didn't even have laptops. They did not have VPN systems installed. So how do you get them to work remotely was a big challenge. And it took few days before things could even restart. Yeah, uh, your views, sir. Uh, C, sir, would you have uh, anything to point out here? To our no, keynote? I think it's a very nice presentation by Chris and uh, he has bucketed it into a very nicely. Uh, these are the questions, as rightly said by uh, Rajkiran Raiji, is uh, uh, developing leader because uh, in banking industry, we need a leader at every stage. At a branch level, the branch head is the branch leader. You need a journal level at a journal leader, then at a circle of his level, at a journal at the head of his level. So every vertical needs a leader to drive it. And uh, developing leaders is a uh, uh, who can adopt these changes and can uh, uh, transform the business uh, is definitely an important challenge for the entire uh, HR team sitting here. And I think the banking industry will have to work on it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So, uh, Chris, sir, it was fantastic having you on board uh, uh, a very important pedestal for IB, which, which we are incidentally doing it for the third year in a row. And uh, we really look forward to having personalities like you when we do the physical aspects of the event. And uh, more sooner than later, we plan to have physical events at IBA. And we surely look forward to you over there. And uh, your, your notes that you shared with us are really thought provoking, uh, especially the, the five mega trends that you spoke about and uh, the key societal trends that you spoke about. So thank you indeed, Chris, sir. And uh, thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. So it's a pleasure. So, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you, that is, thank, you. thank you very much, sir. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Krish uh, Shankar, EVP and Group CHRO from Infosys, uh, to have spared his valuable time to be here with us. Uh, we now conclude our inaugural session. I see the need to uh, wholeheartedly thank uh, Deputy Chairman, sir, and uh, C, sir, and Pratik to have been around for this session. And we'll hear more from the gentleman over the course of the day. Uh, with your permission now, uh, we will conclude the inaugural session and uh, uh, we will.